Star Wars 7x7 episode 2137. It's Mother's Day here in the United States and in other countries as well. And today we're going to talk about 12 types of mothers that appear in Star Wars stories. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy, and thank you so much for joining me for it. So I don't think there's much of an argument against the case that Star Wars is very much a father-focused set of stories as opposed to a mother-focused set of stories. In fact, you could say, oh, it's not father or mother-focused, it's just character-focused, but as far as relationships between a parent and child go, I definitely think it is much more father-focused by comparison. That being said, mothers are present in Star Wars in a variety of forms, and today I wanted to take a look at a dozen mothers in Star Wars and the kinds of mother relationships that are depicted in Star Wars. Granted, these are ones that are not explored in depth to a large degree, again, this whole father-focused business, but these types of mother-child relationships do exist and are there for deeper exploration. You can start with Shmi Skywalker from the prequels, who was introduced to us in the first in-universe story, The Phantom Menace. This would be an immaculate conception mother where there is no father, and so she serves as a Mary-like figure in the films. Then you have Padme Amidala, who is the mother that dies in childbirth. This is the mother that is not remembered by her children because of the fact that she passed so young. And I gotta say, I am of the mind that Revenge of the Sith did her no favors. There was definitely more that they could have done with her. And the reason for her death, of dying of a broken heart, is no. No, sorry, doesn't work for me. It would have been easy enough for them to have had her you know, somehow have a blood vessel broken because of Anakin choking her or something weakened that then in the strain of childbirth just, you know, artery busted and they couldn't get to it in time and she passed away that way. There could have been a medical reason. I don't think that that reason held up personally, but that's just me maybe. Maybe it's not. Maybe there are a lot of other people <laughs> who think that way, but there you go. That's the mother who dies in childbirth. Then you have Brea Organa, the adoptive mother of Princess Leia Organa. And, you know, the funny thing about that relationship is, is that usually with fathers and mothers, the mother is the one that is seen as more nurturing and the father is seen as less nurturing and the one that you fear more. But it was the opposite for Leia. Bail Organa was the one who was you're more involved with his daughter's life, at least by all depictions that we have so far. And Brea was the one that was comparatively more forbidding, if you will, the one that Leia was most nervous about and wanted to impress. Then you have Baru, White Sun Lars, and I guess you can make a case that she's an adoptive mother, but I think of her more as a surrogate mother, I guess, because there is a marriage relationship there. You know, Leia is straight up adoptive because Brea and Bale had no, you know, blood or marital ties to any of her family, but Anakin was the son of Shmi, who was eventually the wife of Kleeg, and I believe that Owen is his son from something separate. I don't think they had him together because he's too old at that point for them, so that would make Owen and Anakin stepbrothers, and so Lars would be Anakin's stepsister, which makes, uh her the step aunt of Luke so there is a you know family relationship there and so I do think of her more as a surrogate mother than a straight up adoptive mother but you know still serving a motherly purpose to be sure next we have Harrison Dula from Star Wars Rebels who is initially a mother figure, and for most of the series is a mother figure, to Ezra Bridger, who is orphaned, has no parents, and Sabine Wren, who is orphaned in a fashion, but when we move on to Ursa Wren, that's Sabine's mother, she is the forbidding, disowning mother, right? And kind of had to do it because of everything that went on with the Empire and the fact that Sabine protested against the weapons that the Empire was having the Mandalorians make. And Ursa had to decide between, you know, allying with her daughter and allying with the Empire and ultimately disowned her and cut her off to 
ostensibly save her, but also to save her own life as well. Then you have the kind of mother who inspires a child to follow directly in her footsteps, and for us, as part of this discussion, it's Shara Bey, the mother of Poe Dameron. Shara fought in the rebellion, was at the Battle of Endor, was an experienced and distinguished A-wing pilot, taught Poe Dameron how to fly from a young age, sadly, unfortunately, died from disease, of some kind when he was about eight years old, but was deeply influential in that regard, and ultimately that's what he ended up doing for a living, first as a spice runner, and then later with the New Republic Navy, and still later with the Resistance. Now, whereas she was a loving and involved and influential mother, Nora Wexley was a different kind of mother. Not that she didn't care for Temin Snap, Wexley, but she was so committed to the rebel cause that she was actually more of an abandoning mother. She left Temin behind to go fight for the rebel alliance and against the Empire, and this caused a strain in their relationship for a number of years. So that's eight so far. I've got four more to share with you. Let's talk about Ray's mom really quick, who still hasn't been named, at least not as far as I've seen in the materials from The Rise of Skywalker, but I would classify her as a sacrificial mother. There's nothing in the story that suggests that she was a fighting kind of mother like, say, Hera or Leia, who we haven't talked about yet. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten her. Um, she's more somebody who, you know, did what she could do to protect her daughter, but was a sacrificial passive mother in that regard. Contrast that with Lyra Urso, who was a protective mother as well, but was more of an aggressive protective mother, who actually stood up to Orson Krennic and his death troopers and you know, confronted them at gunpoint, tried to shoot them down, protect her daughter, protect her husband, and unfortunately, obviously, that did not work out very well. And here we have yet another mother who dies young and creates a void in the life of her child, but Yes, two different types of sacrificing mothers, one passive, one aggressive. Then we have the idolized mother, the mother who is placed on a pedestal and who can do no wrong. Making a little bit of a presumption about this, but I think it's probably fair. She does not appear on screen. She is only described to us by Lando Calrissian in Solo, A Star Wars Story, when he says, My mom was the most amazing woman I've ever known. And I have to say, I hope this means that we'll get to see her at some point in a story, because, yeah, I'd like to know about who this amazing woman is. And this brings us lastly to Leia Organa, who out of all the mothers in the sequel, I think is probably the best representation of the mother's delivery of unconditional love. And that's not to say that any of the other mothers or surrogate or adoptive mothers or mother figures I've talked about here didn't also have some kind of unconditional love for their children or their, you know, children figures, <laughs> if you will. But Leia is most completely depicted in this regard as we see her in the sequel trilogy wanting to reconnect with her son even though her son has gone to the dark side even though he has committed some terrible atrocities all she wants is to have him back and to re-establish a loving and good relationship with him again. Despite every bad thing he's done, she still holds hope that redemption is possible for him. She still you know, and probably more so than she should, takes blame for his descent to the dark side, saying in The Force Awakens that she never should have sent him away, that was her mistake, and the moment that she has with him in The Last Jedi, when he is about to fire on the Radis and the two of them sense each other, you know that the bond is still there between mother and son because he can't bring himself to pull the trigger on those missiles and fire at her. And even though, just looking at it from Kylo Ren's perspective, even though he knows that he has done terrible things and that he has allied himself with the dark side of the Force, even though he believes that there is no chance for redemption for him at all and that he wouldn't necessarily even want it to begin with, he can still feel the love from his mother in that moment. And that's enough of a sign for us that no, he is not irredeemable at this point. There is still hope for him and Leia's love may well be the key to bringing him back to the light. And so there you go, 12 types of mothers represented by Shmi, Padme, Baru, Brea, Leia, Hera, Ursa, Shara, Nora, 
A lot of A ending words there. Isn't that interesting? Ray's mom, Lyra, <laughs> and Lando's as yet unnamed mother as well. And whatever kind of mother you have or combination of types you have, I hope that you are able to celebrate in some fashion with your mother today on this very special day for mothers in our world. And if your mother is no longer with us, then from my heart to yours, as we say on the show here when somebody passes, if the only prayer you said was thank you, then that would be enough, you know, depending on what your religious preferences may be. So from my heart to yours, a thank you for your mother, and I hope that you are able to find peace on this day today. And that's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the curve be flattening for you, wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.